Hello, BookTube, and welcome to your Daily Penguin. <laughs> You'd recognize it by the sound now, <laughs> even if you didn't recognize it by the name. Are you quite... no. No, she's not done. <laughs> Frida, what are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to your Daily Penguin, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Where we're going through my Penguin Classic Library while my little dog tries to dig her way to, through the floorboards. <laughs> uh, we had a, a long walk just a little bit ago, as long as we can under uh, Massachusetts. Continually tightening rules for social interaction, for, for outside activity. And that's made her a little restive <laughs> as, as she prepares to notch her way down into a lower activity level and then sleep for 15 hours. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, in our Penguin Classics we have been mostly doing a roughly chronological walk for the beginning. That's going to change. It's going to change fairly soon. I'd say one more week and we will be out in the wilds. But, but we, for instance, saw the journals and voyages and the immediate histories of Christopher Columbus, which is who is immortally associated with the, with the year 1492. And then we had to move forward in time to look at Thomas Nash. And now we're moving a little bit backwards in time from, from Columbus's signpost date to 1485, uh, to the year when Caxton printed uh, Le Mortatur by Thomas Mallory, uh, the, the most famous, at least in its day and, and uh, you know, hitherto. <laughs> I think it's been it's been outpaced by Camelot, which was based on another Arthurian retelling. Uh, but up until that point, anyway, this was the most famous of them all. Uh, story of the Arthurian legends, of the Arthurian cycle. Here you have Tristan and Isolde, here you have Guinevere and Lancelot and King Arthur and Mordred and the betrayal of the Knights of the Round Table. And Penguin Classic, The edit, this edition is edited by Janet Cowan and is in two volumes. Uh, with tapestries. We're going to, we're <laughs> in a lot of Penguin Classics for this time and a little later, you, we are changing the ubiquity of Roman frescoes for the ubiquity of tapestries. <laughs> uh, and uh, once again, I want to stress here that we are not dealing with uh, the vagaries of translation and we're not dealing with the pitiless ratio of the survival of the text itself. We're, for a lot of Penguin Classics from here on out, we're going to have to find other things to complain about. <laughs> and, uh, and I do, of course, have a complaint. You can see it coming a mile away, right? Les Mortatur is a great, sprawling, fantastic work of fiction. Just, I, I, it is so well known that I, I suspect that it's not nearly enough well read. And that's a shame, because once you get used to Mallory's diction, once you get used to his odd, his odd word choice, which you have to do, with lots of Arthurian <laughs> cycles, uh, it just mesmerizes. Just it's just amazingly good and full of complex psychology. So it's it's a shame to me that that uh, not a lot of people that I know have read this for pleasure. They've read bits and pieces of it at school, uh, and maybe other bits and pieces of it, wanting to know where writers like T. H. White or Marion Zimmer Bradley drew their er material. And, and not really stopping to think that Mallory was drawing it from somewhere else as well. But I mean sitting down and reading it from start to finish. And Penguin makes that hard. <laughs> they make that hard to do. Now this is one of the times where I checked ahead. And Penguin still prints Les Mortes d'Autour in two volumes. Two not very big volumes. For instance, these two volumes together are about 900 pages. So Penguin does make volumes this big or bigger. So I am at a loss. I don't have Janet Cowan here to talk to. I am at a loss to understand why they did this in two volumes. And why, even if they did it in two volumes, they continue to do it in two volumes. Why do we treat our masterpieces this way? Why do we do that? This is a masterpiece. I cannot recommend the book strongly enough. Uh, it's, it sits on a lot of people's shelves. A lot of people try it. They, they, they try it for 10 pages and they realize what a downright strange reading experience Mallory is and they sort of give up. And it requires more from you than that. <laughs> so you have to try harder, that's all. Because if you do, you will be amply rewarded.
Uh, but a lot of people do that and bounce right off it. And even the people who don't, even the people who read it and fall in love with it, really like the weird, spiky, moralistic world that Mallory creates here. If you're reading it in the Penguin Classic, you've got two volumes to read. Why? Why do you have two volumes to read? Why? The two together do not constitute a forbiddingly large work. No, they would be much shorter than War and Peace, for instance. They'd be about the same length as Anna Karenina, which w w Penguin would never dream of printing Anna Karenina in two volumes. Although, once upon a time, Penguin Classics did print War and Peace in two volumes. I wish I still had that box set. Uh, although, there, at least, I could see a splitting point. Mallory, I don't think, offers a natural one. Um, so, although I have the Penguin Classic of Mallory, I would never be tempted, in this case, uh, to go out and upgrade. Sometimes I like to do that with Penguin Classics, because I don't find mass market paperbacks quite so enjoyable to read anymore. So I'm sometimes tempted to go out and upgrade to trade paperback. I couldn't do it now, of course, no bookstores. Uh, might be able to do it online. Uh, but I haven't quite figured out yet what the online book buying... I don't... The online book buying world has reacted radically differently in a thousand different places to this worldwide pandemic. For instance, I think that as an Amazon Prime member, I can still order books from Amazon, but they just won't get to me for a long time. I, I don't know if I can do that at Book Depository or Book Outlet. I, probably I can, probably under the same restrictions that they just wouldn't get to me for a long time. But I wouldn't be tempted to do it because, in this case, because the new Penguin Classic editions of this are just are, are just the same thing. It's still two volumes. And I don't want that. When I get, I, I've used these, of course, I've used these, these introductions and these notes. Uh, but when I get reading, especially in a large work where I get to lose myself in it, I don't want to be running out of one volume and, and go to the next one and wonder what's in one volume and what's in the next one. It, it, it fatally disrupts the reading experience. So this is one of those examples where I go elsewhere for the whole reading experience. And the, the place where I go is Modern Library. The Modern Library does Le Marte Tour in one volume. I imagine a lot of other people do, but I really like, I found this old trade paperback. It's, it's uh, waterlogged and water warped and everything. And I found it and realized I, you know, I'm the last stop for this book. No one's no one's going to want this if it gets any more worn than it is. So I saved it <laughs> and, and brought it into my collection. And it had a boring cover, <laughs> not quite. Uh, it, well, no, in fact, it was even more boring than these because it wasn't. It had less color. I just decided to make a cover of my own. I put I put Richard the Lionheart there and and uh, just made it made a, a new cover that uh, I fitted it underneath the title so that I'm I'm okay to to have it this way. I was going to reinforce it anyway, because the cover was falling off. Uh, so I use this. I use this as my as my reading Mallory, uh, which I could very well do. <laughs> I could very well reread Mallory. I am getting far fewer books in the mail, and the, the spots that I'm, that I'm filling are with electronic galley copies, so I imagine a time a couple of months from now when I will be aggressively reading old books again. I'll be rereading virtually everything in my collection, I'd be willing to bet. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is your, your uh, Daily Penguin for today. It's Thomas Mallory. It's, uh, it's Le Mort d'Artur. And it's a strong recommendation, but maybe not in the Penguin. Maybe not in the Penguin Classic. Because if you fall in love with Mallory, and I hope that you give him the time and the effort enough to, because he, he warrants it. He really does. If you fall in love with him, I don't know that you're going to like stopping your reading experience of the one book, which was conceived... I believe, I believe, conceived and executed from beginning to, at, to last as one book, not as just an, an accumulation of anecdotes, and then this happened, and then that happened. Uh, if that happens to you, you're probably not going to want to stop in the middle in the middle of the story and switch volumes. Uh, I, I could understand it in some cases. We'll be getting to a couple of Penguin volumes that are in two, uh, Penguin sets, Penguin titles are in two volumes and need to be. But this one I don't think does. I've never understood it. Uh, so I, I prefer to go. <laughs> I prefer to go to this one here, uh, my custom one. That's all. It doesn't lay flat. It's all uh, warped and waterlogged, and I love it for that. Um, and of course, there are lots of other places too. I could do. I could do an Arthurian starter kit immediately. I could do it off the top of my head because, of course, I also go to Bullfinch. Bullfinch's mythology has a lot of these things. Tales of tales of uh, of chivalry is great. It's a great volume. And, and I go to Hard Pile and a bunch of other places as well. But, uh, and, of, and of course, The Once and Future King is one of my favorite novels of all time. I think it blows away 
Mallory and a good deal else that's been written. Uh, but uh, either way, when I want to go back to Mallory, I don't find myself going back to my Penguin Classics. I find myself going back here. I don't know that I would get rid of. I've had these Penguin Classics for so long. Uh, how long have I had these? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's a long time. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that I'd get rid of them, but I, I will never upgrade them to a trade paperback. I have the trade paperback I want. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up for now. That is your Penguin Classic for today. It's a monstrous great work and a monstrously influential one. It, it, so many people have looked to Mallory and been influenced by him. So if you have Mallory sitting on the shelf and you haven't tried him, I would say try him. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Book Two.